Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and this is Amy's Bookshelf. So a few months ago I filmed a video called five five star predictions for this year. I'll put it up here so you can watch it if you haven't already. You might wanna go watch that one before you watch this one if you haven't. But this, now that I have read them all, is my update to tell you whether I rated them five stars or not. So these are the five books that were featured in that video. So we have Luster, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Anxious People, the House in the Cerulean Sea and When Breath Becomes Air. So this is the one I finished finished most recently. So I thought I would film an update for you. It will just be a little overview. To be honest, all of these have been included in various wrap ups. They've also been featured in other videos as well. So I've probably said quite a lot about all of these books. and You might be a little bit bored of me talking about them. But anyway, I will tell you a little bit more. Um, so I think I'm not going to start with the first one I read because actually that's the one I have the most to say about. So I will start with Anxious People by Frederick Backman, which was the second one of these I read, I think. Um, so as I've said various times, I've read a lot of Frederick Backman novels. I have a lot of love for Frederick Backman um, and I was very, very happy to have enjoyed this one as much as his previous ones. This, um, it felt really raw and it felt really deep and because it had a lot of different characters in it, um, it felt like it had a lot of different perspectives and a lot of ways for Frederick Backman to communicate his thoughts on humanity, on the situation we find ourselves in and obviously on the characters and the, the situation they find themselves in. So the plot is about a bank robber who accidentally takes a flat of people hostage um, and so the perspective jumps around a lot from the police to the hostages to the bank robber various different people and it was really fun and I really liked it. Um, one of the reasons I fell in love with Frederick Backman when I first read his books was because his writing is so beautiful. I'm a real sucker for good writing even if there's no plot to be honest. I will take good writing over a good plot any day um, and he just has a way of talking about the world, about human beings, about our connection to each other, about love, about death so beautifully um, that you just can't help but love it and this was definitely definitely the same. Um, so if you like A Man Called Ove, if you like the Bear Town trilogy then you will love this as well I am sure. So that was a strong start for this. Then next we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This had a lot of five star reviews when I picked it up. There has also been a little bit of controversy surrounding it. I did mention that in my March and April wrap up as well. Um, and so I don't want to really give it much of a platform. I've not posted much about it on Instagram just because I think it's had enough people talking about it. I don't really need to add my voice to that, especially when there are a few people raising their voice saying that this book is a little bit problematic. Um, so I don't really need to add to that at all. But overall, I did really enjoy it. It felt really wholesome and lovely. Um, it's about a guy called Linus Baker who works for the department for the care of magical youth, I think. No, department in charge of magical youth. Um, and he clocks in, clocks out every day, has quite an uneventful life um, and is relatively happy with that. But one day upper management call him in and ask him to go and assess a orphanage that lives, there's a little house like this one. Um, there you go, um, next to the sea and um, it is run by a man called Arthur um, and it's Linus's job to basically assess whether Arthur's doing a good job at the orphanage and whether it should be shut down or not. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting. It's obviously fantasy because um, all of the children have some kind of ability, but when I say ability, it felt very like X-Men. So it's not like um, they have like telekinesis or the ability to fly or, you know, things like that. It was, um, you know, like they'll be part dragon or they'll have some kind of, like maybe they have wings growing from their back um, or they can breathe fire. It's like, it's not necessarily like a power in like a superhero sense. Um, but it, it's something that obviously makes them not human um, and the reason all of these children have been sent to this house is because they live in a world with humans who don't really accept them so they go there to kind of find a safe haven um, and be looked after um, and yeah so overall it did feel really wholesome it was a really lovely um, exploration of love and of unconditional love and 
I won't spoil it because there are a few things that happen that aren't in the blurb that I don't really want to spoil but yeah it, it did I think love is definitely one of the biggest themes in it um and because you obviously have the perspective of children in there I think it was very poignant um and pertinent and yeah I really did enjoy it then we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson this was my April book club pick um, for my book club you can join my book club it's in the the link is in the description below um, and yeah this was just really really gripping to be honest it's a YA thriller but actually it did have some dark moments um, so when I did my wrap up I was kind of hesitant to describe it as fun because while a lot of the elements were quite fun there were also a fair few moments that yeah like I said were quite dark obviously there's murder involved but there's also a lot of um, ominous threats there are um, ransom notes there's kidnapping you know kind of quite scary things um so despite the fact it's a YA thriller it did definitely delve into some more adult themes um yeah I really liked it it, it was such a complicated plot but not in the sense that you couldn't follow it you could definitely follow it and so when the murderer was revealed when everything is resolved at the end it felt really really satisfying which I really love with thrillers I think there's nothing worse with a thriller than when you've invested all that time into the plot and then you get to the end and you feel underwhelmed and this is definitely not the case for this so yeah I was really really happy about that um this is part of a trilogy so I will be reading number two and number three and yeah if you're looking for thrillers then I would highly recommend this one Okay, then we have our penultimate pick, which was When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. Um, now, this is a autobiography or a memoir um, of Paul, who is diagnosed with lung cancer um, in 20... 2013, I think. Um, and he dies in 2015 as a result of the cancer. That's not a spoiler, it is on the back of the book. And the foreword and epilogue aren't written by Paul, they're written by other people, so it's very obvious throughout that he's not going to survive this. I really enjoy medical memoirs, I've read a lot of them, um, but to be honest I'm not sure I've ever actually read one where the author doesn't survive. Obviously often when people go through these traumatic events in their life I understand why they feel a calling to write a book about it, but because they've written the book most of the time you can feel pretty confident that they are going to get through it and that they will see the other end. However, that's not the case for this. Um, so it goes without saying that the book is extremely heartbreaking. Um, and Paul was a very deep thinker. That is conveyed very strongly throughout this book. I think even before he was diagnosed with cancer, he often thinks about the big things in life. You know, what's the point of us being here? What's the point in life? What's going to happen when we die? And these like really big unanswerable questions that he does try and talk a little bit more about with his diagnosis and I think that gives him a whole new perspective on those questions um and yeah he was a really brilliant writer as well so it was a perfect opportunity for him to be able to use that skill and that talent to tell his own story um so yeah like I said really heartbreaking so don't go into it lightheartedly um but I do think it's worth the read and I think it's an extraordinary perspective um and one that does deserve a read and then finally we have Luster by Raven Lalani. So the reason I wanted to talk about this one last is because if you couldn't tell by my glowing reviews of these four, I gave all four of these five stars. So my prediction was correct and I was very happy to say that I did give all of these five stars. However, Luster is the slight exception to that. Now this was the first one I read and I think when I read it, I knew that I'd put it in this video of five five star predictions and so when I read it and I didn't really have any issues with it I was like yeah that was a five star read I enjoyed that it was good now having read the other four and then being very strong firm five stars no doubt in my mind reads I think I'm gonna have to demote luster to four or four and a half at a push but if we're going with goodreads ratings and we can't do half stars then it'll be four there was nothing particularly wrong with it. I didn't not enjoy it by any stretch of the imagination, hence why when I initially read it, I did give it five stars. What I said in my review was that if, the, if this book had been any longer, then it would have very easily started dropping stars. It's not a very plot driven book. It's very much character driven. Um, so the book is about a woman called Edie who finds herself through a turn of events living with the guy she's having an affair with and his wife and kid. So it's a very messy situation and what I really liked about the narrative is it felt very unapologetic. It was kind of this unpolished stream of consciousness or that's what the, the, the dialogue and, and Edie's 
narrative felt like throughout, which I really enjoyed. Um, but it did feel quite messy. It was jumping around a lot of places. It wasn't very clear where the like narrative arc was going to take us. Um, and so, yeah, I think if it had been longer, it would have easily been a few stars. And I think in retrospect, it wasn't a five star read. I think, frankly, there were too many other books I've given five stars that I know were better than this. So I think that's why I know it's a four star read. But I did really enjoy it, like I said, and it was very different as well. It didn't really feel like um, an authorial voice that I'd read before. Um, so I definitely will read more from Raven Lalani because I liked that it felt unique and fresh. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't perfect for me. So I won't be giving it five stars. So that is all of them. Um, I'm very happy with myself because I was mostly right in my predictions. And I think because I read these quite quickly, I might try and do a second one, um, five more books that I think I'll read five stars and then obviously update you when I have um, read them and let you know what I did rate them. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've read any of those, what you thought, whether you agreed with me, whether you also thought they were five star reads and if you want me to do another one of these videos um, or if you have any ideas for videos that you want me to do in general, then I'm all ears. So let me know in the comments. Um, and if not, please like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.